Hello, Pastor Steve Waldron. Hope you're having a great day in Jesus. Thanks for being with us today. We're taking a journey through the book of Genesis. We're actually, this is the 46th lesson in a series we call Journey Through Genesis. You may want to check out the other 45 lessons. And we're in Genesis chapter 25. You can follow along in your Bible. You don't have to. It's where I just sit down with the Bible and go verse by verse through the Bible little bit of explanation, things I've learned over the years reading various commentaries and studies. So let's get started. We're in verse 1, fascinating in the life of Abraham. So then again, Abraham took a wife and her name was Keturah. We saw the death of Sarah, end of chapter 22, beginning of chapter 23. And so Abraham takes, now this is the amazing thing of what happens when he takes this wife. And she bare him Zimran, Jokshan, Medan, Midian, Ishbak, and Shua. That's verse 2 of chapter 25. So when you get to, you know, like Romans 4, and even earlier in Genesis, Abraham could not bear children. God turned his body clock back on, but when it, it wasn't just for Isaac. Laughter is what Isaac means. When he turned his body clock back on, he did not turn it back off. And so that is fascinating. And so let's just keep going here. And Jokshan beget Sheba and Dedan. You hear a lot about Sheba and Dedan. Um, some people say Sheba and Dedan refer to the British Isles. Other people say it refers to Gibraltar. Other people would say it's a... Uh, just nomadic tribes in Saudi Arabia. Chance there's multiple Sheba and Dedans in the Bible and all three of them, depending on context, may refer to each of those three different places. Now, here's where we get into some fascinating things on language and the nature of God. And the sons of Dedan were Ashurim, Ashurim, I am on the end, and Litushim, I am on the end, and Liumim. I am on the end. Now, why is that important? Because these are individuals. Ashiram is an individual. Latushim is an individual. And Lenuim is an individual. And I am on the end. So we're constantly told by really uninformed scholars, and I wouldn't even qualify them scholars, just people who just kind of cursory study their Bible, that Elohim is a plural, meaning multiple people in the Godhead. Well, no, I am Ashuram is an individual. I am is referring to an individual. So it refers to an individual maybe in his capacities, maybe into his greatness, his capacity to bear others because the seed is in him. Something like that, but it doesn't refer to multiple people per se. And so it's not necessarily a plural people. It can be a pluralis majesticulus, as Jacinius said, a plural of majesty. So let's go to verse 4. We're looking at Abraham, Genesis 25, and the sons of Midian, Ephah and Epher. Now I love in the Bible, we're going to run into some more of these in Genesis where they named, you know, children kind of unique things. Ephah and Epher and Hanak and Abida and Eldea. All these were the children of Keturah. Now we're not doing this in this particular study. I'm writing a commentary series on Genesis where we do a little bit of this. Um, it's discussions in scripture, creationist commentary on Genesis. You can pick that up on Amazon. And what's fascinating is if you go through each of their names and the meaning of their names, it's just fascinating. But we're not doing that for the sake of this journey through Genesis. And Abraham gave all that he had unto Isaac. Notice the seed through Sarah, the messianic seed, and not to Ishmael. So this is going to be a huge factor. Isaac is going to be extraordinarily wealthy as Abraham is. But unto the sons of the concubines, which Abraham had, Abraham gave gifts and sent them away from Isaac, his son, while he yet lived eastward into the east country. So 
concubinage, this was basically something that God winked at in the Old Testament. It's not a New Testament concept. It's definitely not something that Jesus endorsed. He said it was one man, one woman, Matthew 19. And so concubinage would be like in David's time, you had a bunch of wives that were co-equal. Uh, concubinage would be more servants who also did uh, you know, possible intimate things there. Okay, so verse 7, again, it's just representative of the day and age of the Bible, especially this part around 1900 B.C. And uh, number seven, verse seven, and these are the days of the years of Abraham's life, which he lived a hundred and three score and 15 years, 175, and we're coming to the close of one of the most talked about lives in all of scripture. I mean, you start at the end of Genesis chapter 11, go through the beginning of Genesis chapter 25, almost everything there is about Abraham. And when you get to the New Testament, how does the New Testament start? Matthew 1, it talks about, you know, Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. We still talk about the Abrahamic faith to this day. His name started out as Abram, but uh, that was high father, exalted father. But then he got his name father of a multitude. God's able to touch you, make you prosperous as well. Verse 8, then Abraham gave up the ghost and died in a good old age. Now, people say, oh, all those people way back there lived a long time. Well, there's some truth to that. But you've got to remember, before the flood, people were living 900 plus years. After the flood, the lifespan of mankind began to crater dramatically. And Abraham and Isaac are going to both live to uh, this age, 175. And so he gave up the ghost, that is his spirit, his breath. Fascinatingly enough, Holy Ghost. That is the, uh, the spirit of Jesus, the spirit of Jesus Christ in the New Testament, kind of being referred to that man, when he gives up his spirit, he gives up the ghost and died in a good old age, an old man and full of years and was gathered to his people. Now, the phrase gathered to his people has been uh, a lot of study. People have a lot of questions about that because it doesn't mean he was buried like in Machpelah that he had bought for Sarah that he was buried, or is it more like Hebrews 11? And it seems to be more like Hebrews 11 that he's gathered to uh, the people of faith. Because, you know, Jesus said that God is the God of the living and not the dead. He's the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So in a real sense, even though their bodies were dead, they were still alive. We see in Luke 16, Abraham was still alive in, uh, when he had Lazarus in his bosom. So, uh, so gathered to his people means he went to the place with others of like faith, basically, in all probability. That, that's a, another discussion. And his sons, Isaac and Ishmael, buried him in the cave of Machpelah, fascinatingly enough, in archaeology. We also do a little podcast, Biblical Archaeology Today. And you can still go to Machpelah, if, you know, when it's open and that type thing. And the graves of the patriarchs are still there. One of the fascinating proofs of the authenticity of Scripture. In the field of Ephron, the son of Zohar, the Hittite. Again, the Hittites are fascinating in archaeology because they were long since thought mythical till Baghazkoi was discovered the capital of the Hittite Empire, which is before Mamre. So this is still there. Notice Isaac and Ishmael come together. There's, there's not this fighting. And that's kind of a theme in the book of Genesis because we see them coming together and then we see the sons of Isaac, Esau and Jacob after some enmity coming together as well. And so, uh, verse 10, the field which Abraham purchased of the sons of Heth, there was Abraham buried and Sarah his wife, and others throughout the book of Genesis are going to be buried there as well. Verse 11 of chapter 25, And it came to pass after the death of Abraham that God blessed his son Isaac, and Isaac dwelt by the well Laharoi. 
So Abraham, even after giving, you know, portions to his concubinage and their children, evidently just had enormous amounts of, of wealth. And so then Isaac begins to get blessed. And he's probably, and later on, we're going to read about Isaac. He's going to get blessed a hundredfold in one year. And so these were incalculably wealthy individuals. I'm not sure who we could liken them to today. And uh, as far as their wealth, the names like Bill Gates come to mind, Rockefellers come to mind. I mean, people that are just associated with huge amounts of wealth. Warren Buffett, I guess the Rothschilds probably have some money and kings and queen of England and all this. All right, verse 12. Now, these are the generations of Ishmael, Abraham's son, whom Hagar, the Egyptian, Sarah's handmaid, bear unto Abraham. Notice that Sarah's handmaid, not his concubine and there was a fish we know this from uh, different tablets that have been discovered in the ancient Near East that there was like if you had a barren wife you could actually get another wife to bear children and this is going to come to pass a lot in the life of Jacob but we're going to stop right there I encourage you to read your Bible every day pray prayerfully begin your Bible study ask God to help you open thou mine eyes and I hold wonderful things out of your word and again thank you for watching share with others put it on social media hit subscribe bell notifications god bless we love you talk with you later in jesus name